Back from The Walking Dead, this is episode 2 of season 11 and the second part, I guess, of the uh, opener for this season, two-part story. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to see what on earth is going to be happening next. Maggie's in a bit of a predicament, she's going to get out of it, we know this, um, but Negan left her um, <laughs> to get eaten by zombies. Not ideal, but um, yeah. How that uh, affects what's going on with those two um, is going to be interesting to see play out because there's no way they're going to kill off Maggie this early, um, if at all, even. I hope they don't. Um, so we'll see where that goes and how that all transpires. Um, we've got some interesting things with the Commonwealth storyline as well. Yumiko um, needs to stay there now because it seems her sister may be there. Um, so we've got some cool developments with that. But yeah, it still feels quite surreal that this is the last season. It, it's not going to sink in for a very long time yet. But yeah, I'm very excited to see where we go next. So let's get into the next one. Surely Negan heard that gunshot and thought, oh shit. <laughs> wow, well, fun. Getting quite good at bashing people's heads in, isn't he? I think that was a bit of regret. That's something. <gasps> okay, good. Dog, stay alive and well, please. And Daryl, you too, I suppose. You never see a happy message in graffiti, do you? Why don't we see any, like, live, laugh, loves, you know? Is your bro, you sure you can be cold to size? Yeah. Oh, it's brother, not sister. Okay. Oh, oh dear. I'd like to speak to somebody who can actually give me answers. Who do you report to? Oh no, she wants to speak to the manager. Oh. Oh, is that the rabbit that was down there? The stuffed toy. God. I mean, I think it was a terrible idea to bring him along, I must say. You raked one of my people over the coals due to a $2 bill. Which makes me believe your currency is the US dollar. And that you need to strictly control the amount in circulation. Hmm. Literally. <laughs> Damn. Even in The Walking Dead, there's an obsession with toilet paper nowadays. Hmm. <laughs> Maggie. You tried to kill her. No. She was in trouble, and I didn't help. There is a big difference. I mean, is there though? Yeah, because it all started with you, buddy. Sorry about it. That was good. He's there like, I am helping, I am trying, but every instance to prove it, he's not taking. Uh-oh. Why don't you not close the door behind you? I mean, I feel like you have time to get in. I suppose they haven't worked out how to open it, have they? To clear them. I'm sorry. I can't. I mean, you just wanted to be saved yourself. Uh, um, I mean, I don't really like Gage, but, you know. Oh, shit. So he doesn't want to feel the pain of getting eaten, I guess. Oh. Jesus. I mean, saying you can't help him and then just standing there watching him die as well, I feel like that's a bit much. Well, Lydia will be pleased. My other friend went to use the ladies' room. My friend. Don't gaslight him, sir. So you see, I do get it. It's taken them a long time to open these doors. 
So it's weighing up the options, but I'm also a bit like, <laughs> morally grey. But Negan's also not calling her out for it, so maybe he agrees for once. Oh boy, hello. You guys don't want to look at him. Why? I mean, you know why. Why won't you look at him? You're just trying to make a point, oh, aren't you? It's the shell of a man who died at Calvary. It's a hot take, huh? So we flash back to season five, Gabriel. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Negan. You nearly yeah. left that boy without any parents. How about that? I pulled out the chloroform rag he was going to use on me. Oh. Stuffed it in his mouth. Shadow. Writhing. Rocking. I thought it was an animal. I wonder if those are the creepy ass things in the trailer. I was wheezing. Through an open, cauterized gash in her throat where her vocal cords had been. Oh out. God! So I took care of them. Damn. And then I found the food. Lots of it. Got a kid to think of now. I don't feel anything when I tell you that. Do you understand me? Because that is what's out there. It means that nobody has it figured out. Nobody ever did. <laughs> on the same wavelength about that though. They have the same ideas about the future then potentially. They could work together. They don't have to be happy about it, but they could. Damn. Cool, I want one of those. Oh, it's um, this guy. <laughs> At least he's honest. Ooh, nice. Not for Gage, but... Big steps. I suppose in a twisted way, Maggie's like, well, he'll do what it takes to survive. He could help get us out of this now. Hmm. That felt very, um... Is it No Way Out, was it called, the episode in Season 6? This is so Resident Evil. I love it. Oh! <laughs> Nasty. Excellent. <laughs> Eugene brings down the Commonwealth with a pointy stick. So fucking dramatic. Process is in Bologna or other meat stuffs. This inquirer man needs to know. <laughs> you like feeling nervous? He likes feeling nervous, sir. Only one thing gets my heart up. When I'm out there, battling the dead. No wonder he dresses like an action man. Pop up. Use your words. <laughs> yes. I haven't always been the most emotional fella. 10,000 plus hours of death, loss, and fear have opened me up a little bit. <laughs> in me. I've been lying this whole time because I'm afraid to lose the three friends I have in this world. And I lied to Stephanie about being from a large settlement because I was afraid that maybe she was not who she said she was. My track record in the romantic realm is spotty at best. I'm not one for whom any relationships Same. become easy. And I am, in fact, a virgin. Even though I have uh, observed the act far more times than I cared it would mean. Yeah, that was always a bit weird, buddy. And now I've been forced to admit that in this room and I'm humiliated by it. Aww. <laughs> this is like the big ass <laughs> monologue episode, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> oh. Now you're all here, we can kill you all. In consideration for asylum and citizenship in these United Townships. When you walk through these Hooray? Hi. I'm Stephanie. Shit. I can't remember if she sounds like Stephanie or not. <laughs> hmm. Okay. 
he can never just like, there you go. He always has to be like, oh, but I still might, you never know. Oh. That's probably not a good sign. <gasps> Shit! Very skilled, only getting the minor characters. Oh shit! Oh, that's not good. Okay, that was an excellent episode. I really liked it. Um, I think that was definitely the stronger part, I think, for me, of the two that opened the season. Um, we had plenty of action in there. We had some emotional moments as well. And they, like, slowed it down. I mean, a couple of, like, big monologues as well. We had Yumiko's, we had Maggie's, and we had Eugene's near the end, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, I remember the days when I'd open up an episode of Walking Dead, and I'd see it's, like, 50 minutes long, and I'd be like, oh, God, here we go. They're going to drag this out. Um, but nowadays, I see that, and I'm like, oh, good, it's 50 minutes, because, you know, they've made much better use of their time in the last couple of years um, and actually do interesting stuff in it. Uh, so that was always an exciting thing, and um, I think, you know, the addition of some of those quieter character moments was really cool. Yumiko's properly showcased her guts and her intelligence. I loved how much she was, like, deducing from what she'd already learned from that short time in the Commonwealth, and clearly they were impressed with her, um, because that kind of allowed her to pass that processing, really. Um, I'll put her through it. I don't know how the system works. Um, so I love that, her just telling them how it is, um, and when she knows that her brother is there, um, you know, nothing was really going to stop her, so I, I liked that kind of, the confidence that had it almost instilled in her, um, just from the sheer kind of bond of the brother she never thought she'd ever see again. So I really, show, I really liked that they showcased how badass she was in that moment. Um, in, an intellectual badass as well, nonetheless. Uh, so that was really cool. I loved that. Um, and to see Eugene be so emotional and honest. Um, and, I mean, he's always very frank, but... Um, so coherent, I guess. I think what's interesting about how that speech was written... Um, and how it's performed as well, because Josh is incredible as Eugene. I, I, I feel like he often goes under the radar with his performances, um, just because he feels so naturally good at it. It's just like, yeah, it's Eugene. Um, and he doesn't have as many quieter moments like this, because that's not necessarily his character, but they're showing how far he's come um, by Eugene even saying, you know, I, I don't tend to get emotional, but recent years, recent losses and stuff, you know, he's more prone to that kind of thing. So I love that they're showcasing that growth with him in some of the years that we didn't really see because, you know, we had that six-year time jump um, in season nine and suddenly he was, like, like, killing walkers and, you know, getting involved in stuff and it's like, ah, oh, it's a shame we didn't really get to see that development but they're actually putting that into use here um, which I really loved and, you know, he still had some of his Eugene-isms, I guess some of his, like, classic Eugene lines um, just completely unexpected and getting the point across but saying and using words that no one else in the world probably would. Um, but it felt in that moment like he was speaking much more clearly and not using his, like, Eugene language, I guess. Um, which I think is just part of the charm of his character anyway, all that, because it gives him, like, the best lines. And I can't imagine how difficult it is for Josh to have to learn all those lines. Um, speaking the way Eugene does, but it didn't, you didn't really get as much of that there because that was just, you know, the change in Eugene, I think, summarised in the short speech and him just being so honest about um, everything that's happened to him, where he's at, how he's feeling, um, and that kind of coming from Mercer, who we also, I feel like we've got a bit more to him in this one as well, so I'm looking forward to learning a lot more about him. Um, but because he, he could see if um, Eugene was bullshitting, he was kind of, his hand was forced, but again just such a great performance from Josh I think in that just seeing him that kind of emotional and that scared that honest um all that I think he was very ashamed of himself a lot of the time I think he's you know he has no self-confidence most of the time and I think through Stephanie he was trying to gain that and that's why this whole mission to find her and everything was so important to him um and why he had to lie to his friends to get them on board even though they might have helped him out anyway you never know um and I guess we will never know um, but I, I loved how he was so open about that. Um, 
and it was a great showcase of, you know, can you imagine the UG we first met in season four saying and being as open and honest as this? You know, it took him, like, at least six years to tell Rosita that he kind of had a thing for her way back when. Um, so for him to say all this to people he barely knew at all, it was a big deal. And I think that was a huge stepping stone for him and his development, which I, I really loved. Um, and then the Maggie monologue, you know, sandwiched in between those two. Um, I think that just puts her in this position again, showing how far she's changed in the time that we haven't seen her. Um, she's been through some shit and um, she takes no shit for it anymore. And the fact that she can be numb to some things now, because she's probably seen the worst of the worst of it out there with whatever she was like describing there. Um, I found that really interesting. Just, you know, that on top of the fact she has a kid to protect now, you know, she knows if she dies, Herschel, her, his parents are gone. That's it. You know, Glenn's already gone. Um, so I can't imagine how terrifying that prospect must be for her. You know, knowing that if, if I go, if I'm gone, if something happens to me, Herschel, you know, outside of the friends that are still alive from her last settlement, Herschel doesn't know anyone, um, which is uh, must be a terrifying thought, and that's going to keep her going. And then on top of being like, well, you know, everything is shit. The world is horrible. We got lucky with things we've managed to build at some certain points. Um, no wonder she's so determined to kind of try and hold on to anything she can of that, um, while also becoming numb to things. You know, they've lived in this world for God knows how long now, and you think, like Eugene, he used to be absolutely terrified of walkers, and he just ran away from them, now he gets involved. Gabriel, I think it was quite something for him to call Gage a coward when we, we know how he started out when we first met him in season five. But again, see how he is now. He's being terminated to death now, you know? Um... I think they've become somewhat numb or used to this world. Um, so the fact that after even all those years, Maggie then saw something that shook her so much, she's now like, I don't feel anything telling you that. That's a big deal. And, and I don't know if any other character has hit a crucible quite like that. I'm not saying, you know, everyone's experience is different. So I'm sure people will feel differently about that. Um, but to be that so emotionally closed off now, um, is quite something um, and that's why she's still alive I guess in a way, in a twisted way uh, so if they explore more of that I think that would be interesting and I, I also feel like Negan you know, he didn't really openly talk to her after that speech except to be like oh yeah, I, I agree with this, I agree with that and then there was just that moment at the end when he handed the gun back and he kept hold of it for a bit like you know, we're not, we're not good yet. Um, because, of course, they're not going to wrap all that up in two episodes, and I don't think they should. Um, but it felt like he understood. And I feel like he understood the whole thing with Gage. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I mean, I wasn't a fan of Gage anyway. He was an arsehole, and his friends died, then he died. And that's basically his story. Um, and the fact that Negan saved Gage in the last episode. Um, got frustrated that no one kind of helped him out, really. Um, and he'd kind of formed a bond with Lydia. Gage was mean to Lydia. I think Negan knew about that. Um, and then in this one, you know, we get to it. He didn't call Maggie out after that whole thing. So I feel like he was probably in somewhat agreement with it. And when we first see him in the episode, he, I think he has a bit of a moment like, shit, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have left her. I should have helped her out there. Um, because at the end of the day, he is the one on the quest for redemption in for everyone's eyes. Maggie isn't. I, I still think he should have helped her out. Um, but it's cool that they showcased right from the off, like, of course we're not kidding her. She can handle this herself. Um, so that was quite fun that she had to climb under the train, like Glenn climbing under the dumpster. That was a cool reference. Um, I'm sure that's what they were going for. And Maggie was, you know, admittedly quite pissed at Negan when she got back on. Um, and I get Negan has some positive arguments and he has contributed positively but at the end of the day it is his it all goes back down to his mess you know the way he used to run things um so i i do think it's quite something when people villainize maggie 
for something Negan started. You cannot like what she did, and I'm not sure I fully agree with the whole thing with Gage. I think she was ultimately proved right because it took them ages to open that door and they would have broken f through by then, you know, and they would have been fucked if Daryl hadn't come through the other side of the, the um, train as well. So it's kind of, in a way, good that Dog ran off because otherwise they would have been fucked and eaten. Um, uh, oh, that sounded wrong. Um, they would have been fucked. <laughs> Leave it at that. Um, but yeah, that was quite brutal, the whole Gage situation. Um, I liked that they again showed both sides and Alden was like actively trying to help. Um, but the walkers were a bit far back at that time, but you know, they didn't know how to open the door. They didn't know how long that was going to take. By the time they did actually get it open, they probably would have been there. So it's needs of the many, needs of the few. And also to get completely blunt about it. And I don't think it excuses it, but Maggie also doesn't really know Gage, does she? I think when he was properly introduced, I think Maggie was already gone. Um, maybe that would have been different if it was someone like Carol or someone she actually really knew. Um, and again, that's not excusing it, but uh, maybe that is Maggie's mindset as well as being like me to think about the group here. You know, we don't know if we can get the door open. So I think there was that, obviously it's a shitty situation for Gage. Um, and then, you know, he got scared, he ran off in the heat of the moment and that ended up getting him killed, which is unfortunate. Um, I guess it's the argument of did he make his bed and now he had to lie in it or get eaten in it. Um, but it was brutal and I thought the actors did a really good job with that scene as well. Um, like, I can't imagine being in that headspace where you have to like kill yourself so you don't feel the pain of getting eaten, that's horrendous. Um, so quite the uh, awful end for him really. But again, after we saw Maggie's monologue about what she'd seen. I, I just, I think she was kind of numb to that, for better or worse. I, d I don't know if that's going to be kind of a downfall for her, ultimately. Um, it's not like she's completely shut off emotionally, because obviously, I mean, we see how she is with Herschel and her friends and everything. Um, but yeah, it's a complicated thing. I feel like even just an attempt at opening the door, being like, okay, what can we do here? Like, even if you know, you don't ultimately decide, no, we can't open it. At least give it a go, you know? Because she'd just been in a situation um, where she needed to be saved or could have been saved and wasn't, and she got angry about that. And then now it was a bit like, mm, I mean, can we cut back to 10 minutes ago, Maggie, see what predicament you were in? Um, but also, um, there was every chance for Maggie to just have been helped out by Negan there. You know, it would have just been easy as that, pull her over, done. That was about opening a door they didn't know how to open, opening the door on the other side they didn't know how to open to try and get out, and they don't know how much ammo they're going to need to get rid of it, they don't have enough ammo to kill all the walkers there easily. Um, because, you know, once they fire the arrows that they had, they'd have to actually get involved in the uh, mob of walkers to get it back, and you just can't do that. So there's a lot of different factors into it, but I think that's what makes it so interesting because there's going to be so many different sides to that. Um, I don't entirely agree with the decision to not even try. I think they should have at least given it a go. Um, even if it's just like, this is, you know, 30 seconds, let's just see what we can do. If there's any chance that we can do this, then we carry on. Not just be like, sauce. Um, but alongside that, Gage wasn't a particularly nice guy. Um, yeah, it is, it's an interesting one. I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's thoughts on how that played out. I do think it was contextualised in what Maggie was talking about later on, about what she'd seen. Um, but in that moment, I was a bit like, ooh, Maggie, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that was a lot. But I feel like there were some steps forward with Maggie and Negan in this one. Um, she saw how far he'd been to go to survive. I think now he really understands what she's seen, what she's gone through a bit as well. Um, they seem to be on the same wavelength about the state of the world as it is, um, which I think is interesting, because if they're going to build towards a future as this big group, they need to be on the same page about it, you know, like the charters and stuff they had in season nine. Uh, they seemed to be on the same wavelength with that. Um, she trusted him, gave him a gun, you know, she took that first step even after he just left her to die. Um, because there's a difference between Maggie saying she's going to actively try and kill him at some point. Um, and she didn't actually do it. Negan did leave her to die. 
And Maggie has said before, oh, I'm going to kill Negan. We saw that in season nine. Did she kill Negan? No, she did not. Um, so it could have just been the same situation again. Um, so Negan had seen that she tried to kill him before and couldn't do it. Um, granted, Negan is in a very different state of mind to um, now as he was then. Um, it probably would have been, you know, it's what he wanted to her to kill him back then. But it's, it's kind of happened before. Um, but I feel like they are going to make some steps forward. I don't think they're ever really going to get along. I'd be very surprised. But I feel like there is the potential there for them to be like, okay, let's just, let's put, let's put up with each other. You know, I live on one end of the street, you live on the other. We don't need to interact. Sorted. Um, I feel like that's going to be the best case scenario out of the situation. Um, so we'll see where that goes and how they handle it. But I feel like there was even the slightest bit of development there between the two of them. So I'm excited to see um, how they continue to explore that. Um, and yeah, sort of about it, Gage. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, we saw a bit more of Mercer, which I really enjoyed. We've talked about the Marlogs already. Um, seeing a bit more of how just in tune Princess is with the Commonwealth. Like she's like, oh, that's the woman from before. You know, she knows that we tried to sneak out and everything. And some revelations about that I also found interesting. Um, maybe they're not so bad with the whole processing thing. They actually did help them out once they passed through, you know, a pretty rigorous check. I feel like they could have handled that a bit nicer. You know, you could have been a bit kind about it, um, even if you didn't trust them. A bit ruthless, but I liked that Yumiko just called them out and some of the bullshit they had going on with, like, the currency and stuff. Um, and I, I just... Because it's a TV show, I'm still thinking it's probably too good to be true. And um, the whole Stephanie situation turning up, that's great if that really is her. I can't remember what she sounded like um, when they were talking in season 10. Um, so honestly, that could be anyone. It could be fake. Um, it could be someone just pretending to be her. It could actually be her. I have no idea. So I'm sure we'll kind of explore it. I mean, if it's not her, that she's going to have to have a do a bloody good job of trying to pretend that she is, because they've had a lot of conversations. I feel like Eugene will be able to spot if that's not actually Stephanie pretty damn quick. He didn't seem to be like, oh, that's not your voice. That's not her. So maybe it is really her. I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see, but I'm excited nonetheless for them to, uh, you know, put a face to the name, even if it's the wrong face and not the real one. We'll see. But I liked that we got a bit of development in that with that storyline and those guys. I like, I really like that team of those four. I think they really work well together. Um, and again, you know, Eugene and Yumiko in particular have got some really great moments to shine in this episode with their speeches. Um, so we've got some advancement with the Commonwealth stuff. I'm excited to get more of a glimpse of what the next level, the next stage of the Commonwealth looks like. And the whole Steffi situation should also be very interesting. Um, and Dog's Not Dead, which I'm also very pleased about. And um, the bit with Daryl moving through the train, just taking all those folks down. Um, incredible scenes. I like that they were really struggling on the other side to, like, kill the walkers coming at them from that side. And then Daryl just, like, butchered all of them. And he was like, yeah, like, it's hard. And just opens the door and lets them through the other side. Absolute badass. I love that. The way they shot it as well, just from just outside the train windows, seeing just him just going to town on all those walkers. So, so cool. I love that... 11 seasons in, they can still do some really cool, inventive, killing walker sequences. Um, it's like just setting it on the train. I think it's a really neat idea because it's very enclosed, you know, very compact. Um, limited movement in that way for both the walkers and the living. Um, but a nice set piece for like taking some walkers out. I thought that was done really well. You could really feel the claustrophobic nature of it. I feel like it was very Resident Evil-y. Um, I think there's a scene on the you know, zombies on a train in the Resident Evil game at some point. Um, so I really enjoyed that feeling. I thought they got that across really well. Um, some great action set pieces there. Um, and the journey continues with them heading off. Um, but now they have to deal with some Reapers, I think, first before they can make any real progress with that. And they look pretty intimidating. So that's going to be quite the battle for those guys. Um, we'll see how it all plays out. I'm looking forward to some proper, like, a full group of re reapers versus like another group of our survivors because you know i think it was only a few individual reapers um in the bonus episode with them last season um so to actually see like the full force of what they can do i think it's going to be quite something so i'm excited about that hopefully that'll be the focus of the next episode as well we actually see that battle play out and i'm assuming there's going to be a battle and again dog better survive it um 
because if they just like skip and focus on something else in the next one, as sometimes The Walking Dead does, I'm kind of be like, oh, but I want to know, I want to see the Reapers in action, because uh, I don't know how long they're going to be around. I feel like the true focus ultimately is going to be the Commonwealth, I feel like, because, you know, they set a lot of that up. Um, even at the end of season 10, not just in the bonus episodes. We didn't really know about the Reapers until the bonus episodes, I think. Um, so I don't know how long they're going to be around, so I'm kind of just excited to see what they can do and what they're about and just how brutal they seem to be compared to what Maggie has told us about. So that could be quite something indeed. So I'm excited about that, uh, quite the dramatic ending. Not as dramatic as the guy opening like a, a thing of what looked like torture instruments just to get his pen out. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Um, but regardless, I loved this episode. I thought it was excellent. Um, uh, I mean, the first episode I thought was like a good opener. It was very safe, I felt. This one, I think, pushed the boundaries with like the action and some nice character moments in there as well with the three big monologues splitting the episodes up. Um, and I was like, oh yes, this is like, because I wanted, you know, it's the start of the final season, I wanted it to go like, wham, there it is. Um, and I didn't quite get that with the first one, but I definitely got that with this part. So I'm fully on board and excited to see what season 11 is going to throw us for the rest of the ride, because I think we've still got 22 episodes. So, you know, it's like, we've still got a good chunk to go before it even feels like we're going to be starting like the season of like the usual 16 that we're used to. Um... So yeah, I'm really excited to see what they have in store for us, but this was fantastic. Um, this was like, this was the premiere I wanted from season 11. So I'm glad part two really delivered in that front and I think brought everything together very nicely. Some great moments with the three big speeches, um, some development with the Commonwealth thing, some potential development with Maggie and Negan as well. Um, great set piece with Daryl in the train. Um, and interesting endings with Stephanie at the Commonwealth and the Reapers showing up to confront everyone. Um, so the stage is set for some cool stuff, I think, coming up, and I'm excited for it. But yeah, fantastic episode. Can't wait to see what's going to come next. But until my next reaction, thanks for watching.